Good evening and welcome. Welcome in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. God is worthy. He is worthy of our best praise. He's worthy of true worship on tonight. And we're going to give it to him. Amen. I welcome you if you're in the sanctuary. Welcome to God's house. If you're joining us via Facebook, welcome, welcome, welcome. I encourage you to be prepared for this move of God. So go get everything that you need. Get your word Get your paper, your pen, get your offering. Make space so that you can get your praise on. Because we are worshiping him in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Let us get, we're going to get our minds together to receive, amen, this engrafted word. Which continually saves our souls. Hallelujah. Amen. We're rejoicing. Hallelujah. This is our year for receiving grace, hallelujah, for settlement, hallelujah, amen, we got our fixed focus, hallelujah, and we are ready for those things that are unsettled to be settled by what? By his word, he's watching over it to perform it, and for that we can rejoice, amen, amen, so get ready, we're about to enter into praise and worship, hallelujah, to give God the glory, do unto his name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The song says it is so. Amen. And that ties in with our prophetic word of the year. Amen. Settlement. Amen. It is settled. We decree that our marriages, families, health, finances, calling, ministries, businesses, and careers are settled. Let's celebrate 
Yes, amen. It is so. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 150 says that everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord, almighty one. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continue me in my mouth. Amen. How long is continuing? All the time. All the time. Never ending. Amen. Always, Brother Fred said, always, never ending. Someone say, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. At all times. At all times. His praise shall continue. Concern to you. Amen. It is settled. Hallelujah. Come on. Bless the Lord Almighty ones. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm enjoying my day.
weapon. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He's worthy of the praise, worthy of the worship. And now we get to participate and show our praise and worship through giving. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for Sister Lawana as she comes with the ministry of giving. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Amen. I uh, will be encouraging you through your giving on this evening. Amen. Amen. I want to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And I'd like to begin at verse 6. And it says, But this I say, He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he hath purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. And just for a moment, I want to talk about giving. He says, every man according in harmony with that word according amen has to do with in harmony with he said i want you to do it in harmony with as you've purposed in your heart and so that means that giving is a matter of the heart amen it's a condition of the heart and i'd like to look at luke chapter 21 i i love this lady in Luke 21. Amen. And Jesus, Jesus liked her and took special note of her as well. Luke 21, looking at verse 1. And it says, And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he also saw a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said of a truth, I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these of their abundance cast in, cast in unto the offerings of God. But she of her penury hath cast in all the living that she had. And that word penury refers to um, um, amen, her, her state of being poor. Out of her need. And ways that you can sow. We, we know it's some that got it. Amen. And we know it's some that may not have as much. But giving is required of all of us. Amen. Because how can you love. Anything that you love. Or anybody that you love. You give to. And so our state financially. Doesn't exempt us. Amen. From giving. Because it's a show of our love. It's a show of our appreciation. Amen. And we know that God, he causes the sun to shine on the just as well as the unjust. We're not exempt from his blessings. He said, I cause the sun to shine on the unjust. Folk that's not even bothered with him. Amen. His goodness. Amen. His grace, his mercy. Amen. We would that all men, amen, come to be saved. Amen. But Christ died for us all. It's there and it's available. It's just a matter of us, amen, taking that opportunity. And so we all have an opportunity no matter what state we're in. So it's a heart matter. This woman in this text, the woman in this text, she gave sacrificially. She felt a need to. She felt a longing to. She could have did something else with that. Amen. I know she, she had that little bit, and I'm sure she had a lot of needs. But it was, amen, her, her desire. And she had set her heart, amen, to, to give, to sow. And God said she gave more than them all. See, then that also makes you want to look at generosity. A lot of times when we look at generosity, we think of people giving out of their abundance. 
we think in them giving exorbitantly. We think of it being a high amount. But I tell you that in giving generously, in setting your heart, and in showing your love, you're giving generously. You are giving generously. It's a heart matter. Do you feel you have to do it? Do you feel that you have something else that you could be doing? He said, I want you to give as you've purposed in your heart, as you've desired to do it. He said, I can't do it, and I believe it's the, let me go back. I, I want to see if I could pull it up in the Amplified. The type of giver he said that he can't do without. A cheerful, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. Amen. I believe that's the Amplified. Cheerful, prompt to do it. He said, I need your heart in it. He said, I need your heart in it. Amen. Let each one give as he's made up in his, okay, and the Amplifier says, let each one give as he has made up in his own mind and purposed in his heart. See, you've been meditating on it. You've been thinking about it. Amen. And it's in your heart. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasures in, prizes above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without. A cheerful, joyous, prompt to do a giver whose heart is in his giving. Amen. So at this time, if our ushers can pass out our envelopes, amen. Have you purposed on this evening in your heart? He wants it from your heart. Not out of compulsion. Amen, but out of your heart. Amen, we can speak to the Lord from our heart in our giving on this evening. Amen, and we have several ways to give. Amen. We have text to give. We have give the fire. Amen. You can call our church office. Someone can help you. You can go to the website. Click the donate button. Amen. Several ways to give. No excuses for the giving. Amen. Amen. If everyone will please stand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give and to sow. We thank you, Lord, that we, amen, give our offering and our tithes, Lord, on this evening, Lord, with a purposed heart in giving to you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings, Lord, amen, that you have, Lord, just graced us with, that you've blessed us with, that you showered us with, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, that you won't abandon us because, Lord, we're coming, Lord, with our heart, joyous and cheerful. And all we pray, Lord, it is so, in Jesus' name, amen. Blessings running over Hallelujah Oh, going on to you Running over Blessings running over Glory to 
of God. Together, running over, running over. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Somebody say, Lord Jesus, send us a word tonight that will settle everything that's unsettled in our lives. Lord Jesus, send us a word tonight that will settle everything that's unsettled in our lives tonight. I receive the word of God that has settled everything in my life. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the praise team and band a hand if you will. All right. Praise God. Amen. 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 We want to welcome you out tonight, amen, to our midweek service, amen, where we're going to have an encounter with the Lord through his word for a settlement, amen, of everything that's an issue concern in our life. The Lord wants to settle his people in him, amen. Jesus wants to settle you in him, amen, glory to God, amen, and that word settle means to be established, to be rooted, to be fixed, to be grounded. Amen. You just ain't unsettled anymore. You ain't moved no more. Situations, circumstances of life don't move you. Challenges don't move you. What's going on in the world don't move you because you're settled in Christ, rooted in him, built up in him, giving thanks to him. Amen. Because you're settled. It just simply means you know the end from the beginning. You just let the Bible tell you how it's going to turn out. Amen. Not what you see, feel, or what's going on. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 119, verse 89. Amen. He said that thou, O Lord, amen, the heavens, the heavens, the heavens, amen, by your word are settled. Amen. Glory to God. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in the heavens. Amen. What did God use to settle everything in the heaven? His word. What is he going to use to settle everything in your life? What is he going to use to settle your, your physical challenges, your financial challenges, your family challenges, your marriage challenges, your relationship challenges, your financial challenges? He's going to use the same thing that he used to settle everything in heaven to settle everything in our lives on the earth. Amen. No man can be settled without the word. Amen. And without the grace of God. What did God use to save us? His grace. Amen. Ephesians 2 verse 8. Amen. He says, amen, we're saved, amen, by grace through faith. Amen. It is the gift of God. Amen. Lest any man should boast. So God used grace to save us. Amen. Glory to God. Now what does grace have to do with the word? Look there with me to Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Amen. Glory to God. I just want to get you to see that Jesus wants you settled. <laughs> we living in some very unsettled times. Amen. Everything from the government, the school, the medical. Amen. Every, every pillar, every institution is unsettled, is shaken. Amen. But the church need to be settled. The man and woman of God need to be settled. Amen. The body of Christ need to be settled. Amen. Because Jesus made us the light of the world, the salt of the earth. That just simply means that we have the solutions to this world's crisis. Light, light is the answer to any darkness. Amen. And the Bible said we are the light of the world. Amen. Not the darkness of the world, not the problem, not the situation, not the challenges, but we're the answer to the challenge. We're the solution to what's going on in the world. If Jesus is going to ever solve any issue in the world, he has to use the church to do it. Amen. He said in, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, he said, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. So any, any church that, build, that Jesus is building, he's using his word and he's using his grace. 
Amen. It was the grace that saved us. The grace is the antidote for any sin challenge. If you got sin challenges in your life, you need the grace of God. Amen. Because the Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 20 and 21, that when grace, when sin abounded, grace much more abounded. Amen. So there's grace for any sin challenge. There's grace for any financial challenge. There's grace for any enemy challenges. Paul was faced with a, th with a thorn in his flesh, challenging him, harassing him. Amen. Hindering him. And he sought the Lord three times in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And the Lord answered him back and said, my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. It changed his whole outlook in life, changed his whole attitude. He said, most gladly, I'll glory in my tribulations, in my infirmities. Why? Because when I'm weak, the grace makes me strong. Amen. determines whether or not you settle or unsettle. What you're hearing determines if you settle or unsettle. Are y'all seeing this? Amen. So it's your responsibility to be unsettled or settled. Nobody can unsettle you without your cooperation and participation. Nobody can settle you without your cooperation and participation. And then settle or unsettle requires time. Look at what's that Matthew 11, verse 28. Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye who are laden and heavily burdened. What that what that equal? Unsettled. The heavily laden and burdened. That's unsettled. So unsettled, in order to be settled, you gotta come to Jesus. And don't stop coming to him. Don't stop at coming to him. He requires you to do something else. Notice what else he said. He said, I'll give you rest if you come to me. But then he went on to say, come learn of me. I got to say this. Come learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Don't learn about what uh, 50 quarter them and, and uh, what the other what the uh, some of them guys, you know, and wait, wait, you know, yeah, all them, you know, don't, don't, that's going to get you unsettled. Amen. Jesus said, come, he, he didn't say come learn about you. All I need is a, is a counselor. I need a, a what they say, a, a, I need somebody, a life coach. I need, I need somebody to tell my problems. He said, no, don't do that. He said, come learn of me. Come learn about me, not you. I'll learn you. By coming and learning about me. I got to see it, baby. See, that's how you get settled. That's how I got settled. Man, I was unsettled. I was crazy. I knew that I was. 
why we to learn of him. People say, that's all you talk about. That's all I've been learning. Glory to God. I've been learning how to have an answer to everything. So that you may do what? Prove out what? What's good, acceptable, and perfect unto God. See, three stages of the living God. Good, acceptable, and perfect. And the only way you can get that perfect when there's none of him at all. And perfect don't mean you're going to do everything right. What perfect means is that you're going to do what you see. That's what you can't be no more perfect than doing what you see. Doing what you know. Whew. Boy, this is good tonight. I'm going to listen to this over again. Now, watch this right here. Notice, go back and let's finish up. Notice. See, whether I'm subtle or unsubtle, amen, it has to do with what I listen to and the company of and the company I keep. And watch this, number three, and the choices. before you life, death, blessing, cursing, therefore do what? Choose life. So you should be saved. Are you seeing that? So what are the three things, amen, that determine if you unsettled or settled? Number one, what you listen to. Number two, the company you keep. And number three, into a 
a settled state and become an asset in your world. Oh, oh y'all should have shouted right there. Okay, let's finish up. Here we go. Notice. Uh, where we at? First Peter 5, verse 10. All right. Now, notice here what he says in First Peter 5, verse 10. And the God of all grace, who has called you what? To his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. Now we determined what a while was. A while can be a, 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 a moment. A while can be, amen, a night. A while can be a day. Uh, a while can be three days. Amen. That's the max. Three days. Jesus suffered three days. He rose from the dead. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. He said in, in John 2, 19, destroy this temple. And after three days, I'm going to raise it up. Somebody say, I'm due for a raising up. I'm due for a raising up. So your suffering is not supposed to go beyond three days. Amen. Psalms 30, verse 5 said, Weeping may endure but a night, but joy cometh in the morning. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17 says, Our light afflictions, which are but for a moment, work for us a far away from more than an eternal Now, y'all listen to this. You determine how long the suffering is by how you access grace, the information you need, the choices you make, and the company you keep. Mm. They either prolong or shorten that suffering. Yeah. Ah. Woo! Glory be to God. These are things I learned through life. Now. I'm a good life study. I, I do, I study. I study why. I always ask why. To every offense, there is a cause. So I ain't just looking at the offense. When something good happened, I like it, but I want to know what, what made that happen. Lord, how you get to do that? What I do or say that gave you access or the right way to do that? How did it happen so quick when last time it took so long? I ask questions like that. And I get in the Bible and find an answer. I hear it. Amen. It don't take God. How long did it take him to make us? Oh, I, we were made on the sixth day. On the sixth day, God formed man, breathed in him, and brought him life. He was a product of one day. So how long should it take him to heal you, deliver you, and set you free? Thank you. 
you're going through, not that disease you're going through, not that worry, that oppression, depression. No, that ain't your boss. That ain't your Lord. I'm your Lord. Jesus said, I'm your Lord. And the way you're going to know I'm your Lord is by you letting me settle you so I can do better. Amen. Oh, somebody say, I'm being settled. I'm being settled. Come on, settle me. Settled. Somebody say it's getting better. It's getting better. Because I'm settled. Because I'm settled. I'm settled. I'm settled. And it's getting better. And it's getting better. It's getting better. It's getting better. Because I'm settled. See, I want you to get this in your mind. It's not to get in your will. Get this in your heart and your mind. How can you be this Jesus settled you on the cross? One of the last things he said was what?
Amen. We, we, it's a powerful word. It's going to go forth. For the married couples and the singles this weekend, amen. Pay attention to your Facebook page. All the information and the announcements are on there. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and get your In Him book. And then get your book of the one if you don't have it. How to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. God wants to lead his people. Don't forget about corporate prayer. 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Hook on to the corporate prayer line. Get your supply of strength. Amen. Get your supply of grace. Hey, so good seeing you out tonight. Those of you who are watching us by Facebook Live, we so appreciate you. We trust that this word has settled.